Forest Hill has gone dark following those evacuation orders. The only thing lighting up the nighttime sky are the flames across the canyon. You can see the problem right there. There are nearby communities right next to a rising San Joaquin River. They're also dealing with people sleeping outside of their business. The Western store here says it's seen evidence of a bonfire from overnight. Door after door, neighbors say the suspect used that same ploy with everyone. You see just how massive these snow banks are. It's just incredible to think about just how much snow this region received. And also you can understand why roof collapses are a major concern. And some machines not verifying that someone actually is a real person. Correct. And what you're about to see next is a model that borrows a little bit of everything in hopes of getting people off the streets. A shock, surprise, sad, and that's been some of the responses from City Hall down to neighbors where you can see there's this memorial here that is growing. When you talk to people living on this block, you can tell there's this question of, okay, when am I going to get the power back on? We have seen debris flow throughout Mosquito Ridge Road. Right now, there is a lot of interest in this home, but will it generate an actual buyer? The listing agent tells me her phone is ringing off the hook, and when you look past this unassuming exterior, you'll see why. You know, right now at this hour, water is slowly trickling out of this area. And I was here yesterday compared to today. It is going down, but it's just not going fast enough. As you just mentioned behind me, you'll see that the semi truck driver did not pay attention to any of the road signs here. And meanwhile, we've seen large trucks evacuating people with many not knowing when they're going back home again. When will the flood waters recede? I'm more worried about the water level. I'm worried about tomorrow. For the last three days, people living in this part of Acampo painfully watch water flood onto their streets and into their homes. Ahead of Wednesday's forecast, they feel as if they're at the mercy of Mother Nature. Just outside of the Arbor Mobile Home Park, a family managed to evacuate Sunday before the water rose. Glad we did because we wouldn't have even been able to drive out now. They only came back to grab more medicine and clothes. Near Highway 99, Caltrans works around the clock to pump out water away from the area. Between Peltier and Turner Roads, there's a closure until further notice. It's a race against time. More rain is on the way. And at last check, authorities tell me about 12 mobile homes chose to not evacuate, but there are crews ready to go in case they change their minds. And if you've driven around Highway 99, this stretch, it is closed. And you're probably wondering, when is it going to reopen again? Coming up at 5, we are getting answers on what's getting done to get the water out of here. The Enclave is a private gated community. For someone to go through this gate with the intention to shoot has neighbors feeling like their sense of security has been stolen. During the long holiday weekend, the season of joy and peace turned into fear and harm as neighbors describe what they heard Saturday night. A couple of like, pop, 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 pop. They're both alert and conscious right now. Police audio describes the condition of two shooting victims. Stockton police say crews rushed a 40-year-old woman and 17-year-old boy to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The department tells me the shooting appears to be targeted. A spokesperson said it happened during either a party or gathering off Cellar Circle and believe it may be a drive-by shooting. We saw at least one bullet hole into a house as someone boarded up a shattered window. We're more of alert, yeah, and... Uh... We try to look out for the neighbors, you know, and they look out for us too as well. Police say they have no suspect description. A neighbor who asked to remain anonymous worries about the violence spilling beyond the gate. Well, what about retaliation? As far as I'm concerned, the threat is still out there. And it's not clear if the shooting victims are related. However, at last check, they are expected to be okay. It's a mix up no one wanted. I think uh, that's pretty silly. I think our water's just fine. It blindsided the city of Oakdale. Residents began reaching out to the city after people shared this alert online. On March 3rd, the mayor declared a state of emergency for a water outage. But this was meant for the city of Oakdale in Louisiana, where the Louisiana National Guard delivered water to the community. Worried Californians did not catch the location. If it actually happened, like it would 
I'd, I'm sure I would hear about it. But after the hazardous train derailment in Ohio, some people living in the California city say it's not hard to understand the false alarm. And how nothing was done. There was nothing to help, you know, the people. And we've seen what the government's done there. So why do people living in Oakdale, California, receive an alert about a water problem in Oakdale, Louisiana? Well, the city's manager's office tells me it thinks there might have been a glitch with the alert system. The city tells me the alert could have easily gone out to any Oakdale in the U.S., regardless of the state. When the city posted on social media about the confusion, it started to receive fewer questions and concerns. Some retailers in town are familiar with the confusion when Louisianans call their stores. Definitely, they do got a, a, a twang to them, a little accent there. From the cowboy capital of the world to Cajun country, the only thing these cities share is a name, but not a water dilemma. It's a question Mervyn Brookins asks often. How do you reach the youngster that thinks he knows it all? Stakes are high. This may be the men's only shot to reach this teenager. He's 14. He has three gun possession cases. Is it possible to turn this boy's life around? All four men will tell you the biggest misconception is that it can't be done. At one point, each of them sat behind bars. Their circumstances different, but their transformation started with brother to brother. When Robert Cooper got out, he had no resume, but he found employment with the group. Now he's passionate about reaching at risk kids. It's not always easy. It's difficult because you have to first build trust. While kids may not always have the best judgment, they're skilled at spotting out fakes. Walking the talk lends credibility. Also, the fact the men hail from Del Paso Heights gives them a level of trust. After Bronche Williams caught a case, someone intervened. Then I got to thinking in my head, like, we're going to change, we're going to change sometimes. That someone was Mervyn Brookins, the founder of Brother to Brother, and a once-of-a-lifetime opportunity, he'll be attending the State of the Union address at the invite of Congressman Ami Barra. Bunch of emotions went through my mind, the first of which was, I wish my dad was alive to uh, share this moment. The boy from Del Paso Heights who ran into trouble later found himself on the right side of the law. About seven years ago, he started Brother to Brother in hopes of providing accountability transformation and redemption. You know, it's impossible to reach every single young person. But, True. but, but what's your hope in, in having your organization here? Our hope is that we reach enough people to change the culture. If we can get the culture changed, then the culture will reach more people. For some, change may come through employment or sports, but the connection with troubled men and boys is where the work begins. Sometimes seeing is not always believing. I think it's harder to change the perception of the individuals. It's harder to convince people that sometimes people just make mistakes. It doesn't make them bad people. Good people make poor choices.